For me, one thing that always goes hand in hand together with home is family. And today we're about to visit a beautiful DIY crafted tiny house where a woman built her dream home together with the help of her builder brother. Hi Lisa, how Hi. are you? Hi Bryce, good to meet you. It's great to meet you and I am very excited to see your beautiful home here. Yes, it's wonderful. I've really enjoyed building it. Glad you could be here to see it. First of all, what was it that actually inspired you to build a tiny house? The cost of living in Auckland at the moment. It was a situation that I couldn't stay where I was living because of cost. So it put the decision onto me that I had to do something. So I started saving for my house and that's how this came about. And what was it that really made you fall in love with the idea of a tiny house on wheels? I liked the idea because once I built it, I could take it anywhere I needed to. So if it couldn't stay where it was built, there was the option to move it. And it's just more affordable, I think, to build this way. And I don't need a lot of room. I've always lived in small spaces, so yeah, small is good. And you actually had a hand in building this home yourself, didn't you? I did. I was very lucky. My brother Glenn is my builder and um, he's very much um, a person that likes to teach as he builds. So it was fantastic for me. I got to learn a lot um, in the building trade and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I think we got to know each other a lot better than we had previously to building. So it was good fun. Well, what a nice family project and how great that you were actually able to pick up on some building skills along the way. I know, it was fantastic. Yeah, I do a lot of DIY myself so um, getting into building an actual um, a property as such it was great I learned a lot and got to use some more power tools that I've never used before which I love yeah it was good and so what size is your home here the house um, the trailer is an eight meter trailer by 2.4 wide and then it has um, some little bits that stick out each end just to add a probably another half a meter on yeah and it absolutely perfectly fits into this parking spot you've created for it as well, doesn't it? It does. We were very lucky to have this room here and so we just put down the concrete slab to make sure it was solid and um, it's worked really well. Great. And you've got a lovely area of greenery right next to the house as well? Yes, that's this one that we've just left as it is. So it's nice and green, it's private and works good for us. Yeah, and that really is something that I noticed about this place because we're so close to the town right now and yet you've got this wonderful little private nook here, don't you? I know, we're very lucky. If you're down at the bottom of the drive, you wouldn't even know that we were up here. Yeah. yeah. And how did you find this parking space? This is um, my mother's property here. So um, originally there was an old Skyline garage on this um, area, which was my brother's garage for his project car, which he had for years. And when he got rid of the car, I suggested that he get rid of the garage. <laughs> and so then I could have my turn using the space. So it's gone through the family. <laughs> and the style of this tiny house is absolutely beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about the design? The um, design came just into my head with just doodling, really. And then I have a friend who's an architect and he drew me up some very basic plans so we could get all the aluminum and joinery done. I didn't want all the cladding to be exactly the same, so we went with the shadow clad and the aluminium weatherboard as a contrast. And I'm really pleased we did because it, it, I think it looks really good. It certainly does. And then the green door there adds a little bit <laughs> yeah. of a pop, doesn't it? The green door, it was either going to be green or orange, so those were my two favourites. And so it went green. And um, I'm very pleased with it because it does definitely pops when you come up the driveway. You can see it a mile away. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love to see the little Remu feature there as well. Yes, um, I bought some weatherboards from a recycled company and they're all painted. Uh, so we put them through the planer and took the edge off them and reused them up there. So just to add a little bit of warmth to the outside of the house. Yeah, it's a lovely contrast between the shadow clad, isn't it? Yes, it's lovely. I love it. And the drawbar here looks interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, well, the drawbar comes off the trailer. So um, when it's permanently parked, um, we will be able to take that drawbar off completely. And so you will never see it, which is really good. Yeah. Well, the house is absolutely beautiful from the outside and I am so excited to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Sure, come on in. All right, after you. This is 
absolutely gorgeous. You have done such a wonderful job in here. Thank you. Yeah, it's turned out very well. Really pleased. It's that perfect blend of quite modern, but still very cosy, isn't it? Yes, I wanted to use the black, white, gray palette, but also bring the wood in as a warmth to the house. Absolutely. Yes. And then wonderful feature elements like this gorgeous wall back here. Yes, my, my feature wall of wallpaper, learnt wallpapering 101. <laughs> <laughs> I should have listened to the, you know, measure twice, cut once, but I didn't, so I, I wasted a bit, but we got there in the end. <laughs> you certainly did, it's lovely. And then you've got the wonderful couch here as well. Yes, yeah, so this couch is a bit of a story, because this couch was bought when I lived in my previous uh, accommodation in the cottage, and because it took so long to make them, I shipped it out of that cottage, so this couch stayed in storage for three and a half years before it actually got to live in the tiny house. So I was really pleased when I got to take the plastic off it. <laughs> I bet, and it definitely looks like it was made for the space. Mm. It's worked perfectly actually, just fits perfectly at the It end. certainly has, it even matches your door. It does. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I love the Edison lights here as well. Yeah, Edison lights, uh, it takes me back to my grandmother's house, uh, which I love, and they're a very soft uh, light. So in the evening, it's very nice just to have those by the couch. And then above us here, we've got a storage loft. Yes, just a small loft for extra storage, which has come in very handy. And then a really nice looking ladder to access it. Yes, I was very lucky with this ladder. Um, I found this on the Tiny House Facebook page. Someone was giving it away, so I asked if I could have it, and yes, I could. So it's actually only two thirds of the size that it originally was. I've kept the other third. It's an, uh, an old painter's ladder made of cedar. And just adds another story to the tiny house. It certainly does. And I see you've got your TV behind you there as well. Yes, TV on the wall, on a bracket. So it's just easy, you can pull it out, turn it whichever way you want. And it just keeps it out of the way, having it on the wall. Yeah. Mm. Another comfortable looking chair here. Yeah, this is one of my um, upcycling jobs. So it was a very old chair that was run down and I um, stripped it all down, redid the woodwork and the upholstery. And now it fits in here nicely. And then it looks like you've got a bit of an expanding table here as well. Yeah, I found that at a little shop in Only Hunger, and it just flips up and makes it bigger, and then there's four chairs tucked away inside it. The table with the drop-down size came in very handy a few weeks ago because I had my first dinner party, the inaugural tiny house dinner party. The housewarming, <laughs> yes, I love it. Yes, it was, yeah. So I had seven people here for dinner, and it worked very well because there are four chairs and then I bought some extra little stools to go around it and it was very comfortable. It wasn't squashed at all. So I was really pleased. It worked. Well, it's nice to know that you can live in a tiny house and still have friends over, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. And I don't think they thought it would work, but yeah, they were surprised. And now we have to talk about the kitchen because this just looks lovely. Yeah, it's a great kitchen. I wanted the galley style kitchen. Uh, because for me it just worked well having the space to move through the middle. But everything fits nicely, cabinetry was just bought local and it's all kit set so I, I learned how to put kitchens together. Nice. Which is fun. I had a friend who's a cabinet maker and he showed me one and then left and said right it's up to you. Off you go. Yeah so I did and I was very proud of myself for doing it. Yeah it's worked out well and we've got the gas oven, so full gas oven and hob. And that's really helpful because one day if I'm not on power mains, then the gas is great. And I really love the sink that you've chosen here too. It just matches this bench top so beautifully. Yes, well it took a while to pick the bench top to match the sink because the sink came first. The black sink I decided on, one of the reasons for it was because the house is north facing at the moment, um, the sun comes straight in the window at the bench um, in the morning and having a stainless steel sink would have been too harsh with the reflection from the sun. Right. So the black actually works well. Even though it, it gets hot, I do have blinds that are sunshades, so you can block off that sun in the morning if need be. Yeah, because those stainless sinks, they can get really glary, can't yeah, they? Yeah, and, they, and then they can get hotter than the black ones at times too. That's true. Mm, mm. Lots and lots of storage built in over this side as well. Yeah, there's lots of storage. Um, I had the pantry and the wardrobe doors colour matched to my front door to have some continuity in the house and it worked really well so it's given me a lot of storage in those spaces and then all the stairs are flip tops so they have storage underneath as well. 
You've got the washing machine tucked away in there too? Yes, that worked very well. I haven't had to go for a front loader. I've never had a front loader before, but when you're working in spaces like this, then it works, but it works really well in that space, yeah. Yeah, the fridge is very tidy there as well, isn't it? Yeah, the fridge, I had another fridge from my previous property, but it was very wide, and so it was going to shorten up the space for the pantry. So I decided to go and buy a new fridge and just went and found the most narrow one I could find. And it works really well. There's way enough space for me. And then I see back there we've got this pocket door with this gorgeous Rimu timber. Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, the wood I found at a timber recyclers, it was four planks of Rimu. And I've got a friend who's a cabinet maker and he helped me make the um, pocket door. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really good. It was, it was a good project. And I'm guessing behind the door there is your bathroom. It sure is. Yeah, my little but practical bathroom. Great. Can we take a look? Sure. Oh, I love this. What a beautifully decorated space. That vanity just becomes such a feature in here, doesn't it? It does. I was very lucky that um, that came out of an old villa that my brother was working on and um, he had saved it under his house for about five years and thought it would fit perfectly. And so uh, before we actually had the trailer made, we had the vanity so we knew to um, extend the trailer a little bit to fit that particular vanity. Yeah, and then I really do like the way that you've added this bump out in here as well because it creates a little bit of a feature out of the vanity and then it also just frees up the space in here, doesn't it? Yeah, it does free up the space. If I didn't have it, then I would have had to have a very small vanity or even just a little single basin by itself and I didn't want that. So bumping it out worked really well to create more space in the bathroom. And I see you've got a flushing toilet in here. I do have a flushing toilet in here. Um, my plumber came across this toilet where the um, cistern is actually hidden in the wall, so it actually saves space because it's not coming out too far. So it works really well. And lovely shower. Yes, full size shower. It's a um, 750 by 900 shower. It works very well in that space. And we've got your sleeping loft upstairs. Yes, we have. Cool, can we check it out? Sure, let's go. After you. Thank you. Oh, again, this is such a lovely and spacious feeling loft up here, isn't it? It is. Um, I decided that I wanted room enough to sit up in bed, and we did the drop floor from the loft platform so I could stand up at the top of the stairs. And it's just easier when you're bringing things up or trying to make your bed to have that room to stand without hunching all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love the way that you've used these screens here as well because they provide quite a bit of privacy up here in the loft, but they also create a really nice feature from below. Yeah, I saw them at a garden centre and they're used for outdoor landscaping mostly, but I decided that the black was me and the Pahutakawa design was really cool and it works really well. Great to see the skylight up there as well. Yes, the skylight I really wanted because, well, first of all, I wanted it as a second uh, way of getting out of the house if there was an emergency. But then after buying it, I realised it didn't open all the way out, so <laughs> that's not going to work anyway. But it's really nice to let the hot air out in the summer and it's nice to be able to um, just have a look out of it while you're in bed. And you do have great airflow as well with the two windows there too? Yes, originally we were going to put in three windows, but decided that um, it was better to have this wall utilised for something else, you know, putting the cabinet in front of it and having the cross breeze, especially with the windows downstairs, works. Yeah. Mm. And you've got some extra storage up here too? Yes, extra storage, a little cabinet that I had as a child. It was my set of drawers when I was little and my mum kept it and so I upcycled, took it away from the you know 1960s and brought it into the 2020s with some different colours and it works very well because it's only very small but it fits the space. I love that you've been able to take something from your childhood bedroom and make it work in your loft up yeah. here. Yeah, I mean my sister will always tell you they were her drawers first but that's okay, they're mine now. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> and so how long have you been living in the tiny house now? I've been in here for about three months now. And how are you adapting to life here? It's great, I love it. It works for me, it's a good space and uh, everything is great, I love it. It took you about three years to build this tiny house, didn't it? So in that time, you must have built up quite a bit of expectation. Would you say it's living up to it? 
It's definitely living up to it, yeah. I did have original ideas of what I wanted the tiny house to be and that changed along the way. Just as you build, your ideas change, you want different things in it that you thought might work but they don't work. So I think taking that time to build it really paid off. So you've been living here for about three months now. After that amount of time, is there anything in this design that you'd change? I wouldn't actually. Everything's working how I wanted it to work. So living in the space now just shows that things I chose were the right things, so I'm pleased. This home, I mean obviously there was a little bit of a DIY aspect to it, but you worked together with your brother. Can we talk a little bit about the budget that was involved in bringing this build to life? Sure, I had a budget in my mind of about 70000 from scratch, and um, it worked out just on seventy five total finished. Great. Yeah. That is a brilliant result for a home mm. of this quality, isn't it? Yeah, I was really pleased. I really kept a tight budget and used um, upcycling where I could and things like that. So it worked. This home means a lot to me because, you know, I've put my um, blood, sweat and tears into it, literally. <laughs> and I know that I've done a good job and my brother helping me has been fantastic. It's really been a great project for the two of us and he's um, really enjoyed working on it as well. So that's really nice. And it's great. I love what I've created here. It's, it's my home. And what do you think the future holds for you now? Well, I think I'll be here for another couple of years at least, and then looking to shift on and take the tiny with me to a, a nice piece of land in the country. Well, Lisa, you have created such a beautiful home for yourself here. Both you and your brother should be incredibly proud of what you've built here. Thank you so much for sharing Thank that with you. me. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Lisa really has created such a beautiful home for herself here. I think the fact that she got stuck into the build herself is just so special and you really can see how many wonderful personalized touches she's built into the home. The fact that it was done together with her brother as well really does mean there's a tremendous amount of love that's been built into the walls of this home.